Hey everyone, uh, we wanted to jump on here and just give a update on our daughter Avely. Uh, for those of you that have been praying for her over the last couple of weeks, and maybe for those that are watching and don't have a clue what's going on, I wanted to kind of give uh, a little overview of what's happened as well as what we're looking to do here in the future. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were on our way to California and in California, uh, my daughter started having some seizures and uh, spasming. Um, her eyes would roll to the back of her head, uh, obviously uncontrolled. Um, she would lift her arm and spasm with her arm. Naturally, this really scared us. We didn't know what it was. Uh, initially, when we saw the eye roll, we thought, okay, is there something in her eye? You know, naturally you see a child do something like that and you get concerned. And you're like, okay, well, there's just maybe there's a speck in her eye, or who knows what. Um, when we saw that it happened uh, another time, uh, you know, with an hour apart, even uh, we were like, okay, then obviously this isn't just something in your eye. Um, we communicated uh, to a, a doctor, a physician, to the telehealth. Um, they did a whole FaceTime thing, like what we're doing here. We're able to see. Uh, the situation and said, hey, let's monitor it. And if it happens for uh, more than five minutes, then you need to go into an emergency room and that whole thing. So naturally, you can imagine as parents, uh, we were freaked out. Um, we were on heightened alert to watch to see if anything would happen. While we were in California, um, some of you guys are aware it did happen again. Uh, we went to the emergency room. The emergency room, they uh, looked at her, and within just minutes, she was clustering in that, that state of seizures and had continuous movement, spasming over and over again. Uh, they admitted her into the hospital. Um, we were there uh, for many days just tracking her on a what they call a video EEG. And some of you guys have seen the pictures where they take all the wires, put them onto your head, and they just monitor everything. Uh, and they did that for a 24 hour period of time. Uh, they put cameras on her to see uh, all the information that they could possibly collect about how she spasms, what what happens uh, when it's a seizure. At this state, when we were in California, we didn't even know what it was. So they were trying to determine, is it a seizure? Is it a spasm? What is this that's causing this? Um, in that process of going through all that, uh, we learned, well, I asked the, the, the doctor, naturally, as any parent would, what am I supposed to be praying for? Which is the best uh, scenario? Should I be praying she's having seizures or praying that she's having spasms? Because whenever you're in a situation like what we were in, we immediately went to Google and started Googling what all the possible scenarios could be. The, the nurse told me, uh, you, you don't want the spasms. Pray for seizures, not spasms. Uh, you guys are aware over a period of time, they've come back, the neurologist did, and diagnosed her with infantile spasms. Infantile spasms is a really, really rare condition that a child can get. Um, it's something that doesn't show up for a period of four to six months. And so you don't even know that your child has it. And it just feels like it kind of comes out of nowhere. So they kind of got us on a plan to come back obviously to Texas. We can't stay in California the whole time. And to have a video EEG done again, uh, they had prescribed her to be on a, a thing called pretnisolone um, and it's a steroid. And it basically just tries to help her not have seizures. And in that they know a couple things. They know that they can't control uh, or they can't allow her to be on that medicine for over a certain period of time. And that having her on that medication can cause other issues that are really not good either. But they put her on it because they know that they have to control the seizures and the spasms. What I got keep calling them seizures, but looks like a seizure, it's a spasm. And in that, they, uh, they know that they have a certain period of time. It's like a window of time that you have to try to collect information on how did that help or not help the patient. And so yesterday we went in for a video EEG here in Texas, uh, saw a neurologist, and today we just got back and we heard the results of that test. 
And uh, I'll be honest with you, they're horrible. Um, they're not good. And we've been praying for a miracle and we know that we need a miracle. Um, but in that, we have found out a lot more information. Um, there's certain steps that, that we have to take in order to just move to the next step. But in trying to check the video EEG to see how the medication uh, has worked, um, they want to try to wean her away from that medication. Not because it's, oh, we're doing good and everything's great. It's because this is just the process. The process is can't stay on that medication. Well, in not, not being able to stay on that medication, now we're in a situation where um, every week uh, she can kind of like wean a little bit more off. And during that four week period of time, we have to monitor and like write down all the information about any type of spasms that she has. And so th bullet points, I'm try to get out without, uh, without becoming a mess would be, uh, thing. I asked the doctor questions like this. I asked the doctor about what's the best case scenario for her. And I said, on a scale of one to 10 in this situation, you know, is there hope for her to just live a normal life? And it's a, it's a zero. Um, it's a zero out of 10. There's going to be problems. Uh, there's going to be issues. And, and we know that the thing with the doctor, they don't know what all this can be. And so, uh, I said, so when we wean off of this medication, what is it that we're hoping happens? They said, we're hoping that naturally weaning off that, that she doesn't have any more of those spasms, but we know that, that even if she doesn't have those spasms, uh, there's going to be issues and, and even months could go by where she doesn't have anything. And then all of a sudden it could be a huge flare up and everything could go like way back. So I said, okay, well, what happens if we start weaning her and she knows we notice that she starts having those spasms again. She said, well, then at that point, they put her on a thing called, uh, what is that? Reg Viga Batrim. Viga Batrim. Viga Batrim, which basically, uh, she said, it's got a black label on it. Uh, I said, what does that mean? She said, well, it's not prescribed for situations uh, of any kind. People don't want you to take it because... Uh, there's a risk of blindness when you take the medication and that she has to make me aware of that because if she has any spasms, that that's the next step. Um, she can't stay on that steroid and, uh, and that, that that's just something that we have to deal with because it's the lesser of two evils. So I'm sitting there processing that information and I'm going, okay, if that's the lesser of two evils, will you just hit me with it? Um, I need to know all the information. So like what happens if, if, if that either doesn't work or if you just didn't want her to take that cause you don't want her to go blind. What, what, what choices and what options and what are we really facing? And she said, well, the issue with these spasms is that this is a rare situation where she said, and she was great. This, this, this neurologist was amazing. Yeah. She answered all our questions. She gave us all the information. She didn't beat around the bush. She was just like, you have a hard, long, tough road ahead of you. And she's like, we don't even have enough information about all of what you got going on to know all the things that possibly could. She said, I'm trying to give you as much information as I possibly can. So I'm going, tell me what happens if we don't do this, she said. Well, the biggest thing with these spasms is that they cause regression, okay? So anything that that Abley has already learned at this point, um, whether it be grabbing for things, sitting up, rolling over, um, talking, talking uh, just any form of communication can go away. And so uh, basically it's a state where if she just continues those infantile spasms, she can become a vegetable. And that is super hard to process and to hear and to, um, to, to, to deal with. Uh, I'm not okay is the best way to say this. 
Uh, I'm really in a lot of pain. Um, I've been given more than I can handle. Um, I know Amy has. Uh, this is this is more than we can bear. Uh, we we then said, okay, what happens with uh, what happens if she's on that medication that that you're prescribing, the blindness one, and uh, and it just doesn't work. Uh, and then she said, at that point, we have to go to another type of specialist that's above her because that's kind of where she just, it's her ceiling. Uh, she, she can't do anything beyond that. So what, what does the next step look like though? And she said, well, uh, there's medication out there that is in the form of shots where you give your child these shots and you, she basically talked to us at that point all about our insurance. Um, this all happened within 15 minutes of time, so I'm just trying to regurgitate the information as it's on my head. Um, but basically, in those shots, she's talking to us about insurance because she said it, it'll bankrupt you. Uh, that basically, uh, the the thing is really rare, and this this condition they've now noticed. So uh, they with infantile spasms because it was so rare group of families came together and decided they wanted to get publicity on it so that way people knew about this syndrome and that it was out there because the more people that know the more likely research will be done to find more solutions and help with that unfortunately the pharmaceutical company ACTH um, that does ACTH found out about it and they found out that ACTH works with infantile spasms and because of that they raised the cost of ACTH to be $20,000 for this medication so unfortunately because more people know about infantile spasms now the medication that helps solve the issues with infantile spasms is just raised extremely high um, so if we have to go down this path of medication, if the Vigapatrum does not work, then we will then have to go to the ACTH and try that medication. So in saying that, I asked the lady, well, how do I even pray about this? Like, what is, it sounds like there's no good step. And she said, well, obviously you wanna pray for no more spasms at all, right? And I said, well, if she has no more spasms, though, what's the what's the worst there? And she said that seven out of 10 kids um, have issues and won't be normal. So I said, OK, well, then that means that three out of 10 kids, um, they can be normal. And she said, no, she said, I can't even state it kind of like that. She said, because those kids are going to have issues, too. Um, and it's just what it is and I said so what is the seven because you're you're highlighting the seven as if 70% is going to be really bad what is that and she said that's the problem is that it can be anything we don't know um, and it's just one of those things that she asked me this and it killed me um, she said you have a good support system around you and I said yeah I said, I do, I do. And I'm, we're very thankful for everything that everybody's done uh, to help provide meals during this time. Uh, people that have contributed on GoFundMe to help us uh, pay for some of these bills that we know are gonna slam us. Um, but when she said that, after telling me all the other stuff, um, I gotta be honest and say, there's nothing that anybody can do to help me or to, uh, to make me feel better right now uh, because I'm in a situation where I can't get the help that she needs and nobody knows how to help her really. And we're monitoring something to help her. I get what we're trying to do, but the options are just not what you want to hear. So the outcome is, is not, the goal doesn't feel good. Thankful that my daughter's alive right now. Um, for that, I'm grateful. Uh, I, in some weird ways, and I know you guys don't know this because we haven't shared, um, I think Pastor Danny might be the only person that I've kind of talked to about my rhythms of life and things that I do every day. Um, I listen to a few songs every day. 
Uh, one of them is Cinderella by Stephen Curtis Chapman. If you've never heard the song, it's a really great song. Um, I listened to a song by Toby Mac called 21 Years. And both of these songs uh, talk about how life flies by really fast with your children. And that you need to embrace every moment that you have with them. And I, uh, I wear my necklace. You all know my necklace. It's got my kids' names on them and their birth dates and their nicknames. And I always tell them because they're the closest to my heart. And that's why I wear it right there. And so it's really hard to be attacked in this area of my life. Because I love the kids so much. And I just want what's best for them. And I hate being in the situation that we're in right now. But in some ways, I feel like God allowed me to hear those songs and play it literally every day, Amy. And all the kids can tell you we listen to the same songs. We listen to the Lava song. Uh, we listen to, uh, man, so many songs that I've just identified as these are my kids' songs. Because I want them to know that I love them. And it's what we do everywhere we ride. And in some weird way, I feel like God was trying to prepare me uh, that, that my time uh, with, with my kids is short. And uh, I asked the, the lady, I said, because I just, you're just asking, you're firing away as many questions you can think of in that moment. I said, so the things that she's doing now, like just grabbing my finger or holding me or reaching for me or anything, I said, how, how much should I soak up that like a sponge? And she said, you need to. Um, she said, you need to do that every day. And I just reminded that, that life is short and you don't know when things are going to change. And at any given moment's time, things can be different because there was literally zero indication of anything going on with Abley. And then out of nowhere, this is the situation we're in. That I don't know what you want to add to that. But. Um, I will answer a question Devin put with the medication. Um, it, so ACTH um, and prednisone are the two very common medications they use to stop the spasms. Usually if one works, the other one probably wouldn't. It, the, one of them possibly can work. And when prednisolone, when it's weaned off, if she starts having spasms, they then go to that Vigabitron. Um, But if she starts having spasms again, spasms again, spasms again, they would then try the ACTH. There is no guarantee that one will work better than the other. They're just the two forms of treatment that they have available to stop the seizures in their tracks. But with prednisolone and ACTH, it's not something you can long-term keep up you can't do it long term it's not wise to so they have this other treatment that's the vigabitrum that they can use longer term but again it's still not a definite that it will prevent them from happening it it's a lot of unknowns question marks um it's basically try this path if that works for a while good but know that it could possibly not work long term. It, there's just so many what ifs. Um, that's the worst part. That's the hardest part in this. It's not something that you're like, if you take this for the rest of your life, you're good. It's not like that. So we're just trying to take it a day at a time. We're going to wean this medication. Keep an eye on Avely. Um, We're still in a position with this medication where we have to keep her away from as many people as possible because she is immunosuppressed. Um, what you guys can help with, just continue praying for our family. Um, continue. You're just words of support and love. And we thank you for those that have provided meals for us. I haven't even gotten a chance to send out a message to people because just to be honest, I'm so broken right now. And... Just, we, we really covet your prayers and we thank you for that. Um, if you can help with the GoFundMe, that will help us um, to an extent. We're still fighting the um, insurance, insurance uh, for the hospital stay in California. We don't even have any idea how much that hospital stay will be if Molina doesn't accept it. Um, so just prayers.
I think that's really all that we can say on it and understand um, when we're in public and we see you, if you try to hug us, we would love to hug you, but unfortunately we can't right now. Uh, we just have to stay really safe for Avalie because if she got sick on top of what she has, it's just so dangerous for her. So I think that's all that I have. Just love your family, guys. Yeah. And hold everybody close. Uh, you don't know when it's going to end. And again, I, my heart is hurting really bad right now. Um, I, I don't know how to express myself the right way other than just say I'm not doing good and I'm not okay. And I don't know when I'm going to be okay. And so uh, please pray for us because there's a lot on our plates and there's a lot happening. And like I said, it's more than I can bear. And I know um, I'm going to continue to try to lean on the Lord. Uh, for those of you that attend our church, uh, <laughs> thank you for, for being a part of what we do. Thank you for the ministry that, that we get to be a part of with you. Um, I feel like you have a pastor that's that's a fraction of what I could be. Um, and I appreciate those that stick by us in these hard times uh, when it's easier to go somewhere else or um, just to not have to deal with kind of the situation of life that we've got going on right now. Appreciate those that are my friends that support me and are loyal, and faithful to help, uh, especially whenever we're weak, uh, can continue to carry that load and continue to make things happen. Uh, I want to celebrate uh, God. Uh, our staff last Saturday, uh, we we packed up thirty thousand dollars worth of money and envelopes to give to people on Sunday morning. Uh, to either help them in need um, or to tell them to go mobilize that and to go give it to somebody that they know in need. I'm proud of our church. I'm proud of the, uh, the wins that we've seen. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I know uh, I think it's like almost 130 people have given their life to Jesus this year. Um, we, we baptized like 12 or 13 people yeah. on Sunday. So I think we had like 120 yeah. some people that have been baptized the same. <laughs> uh, this year, which is awesome. Um, we had a thousand and ten people at church on Sunday, <laughs> literally a thousand and ten. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah. But I, I'm such a broken leader right now. Um, both of us, we're so <laughs> broken right now. That we're just hoping that God, uh, can continue to show himself strong uh, in our weakness because we're weak and that he can continue to use the church to go forward and reach people and share the love of Jesus with people. Because I'll just be honest and transparent. If I didn't have my church family right now and if I couldn't lean on the hope that I find in Jesus because when these doctors tell me that I'm hopeless, um, I just keep going, God can do anything. And I'm going to keep praying that way because uh, I don't want to accept uh, these horrible negative things. So I'm going to continue to do that. Please continue to stand in the gap for this. <laughs> Just know we're weak right now. And I hope that you can be okay with that because uh, we just can't, can't do everything like we can do before. But I love you guys. We love you. Appreciate everybody Thank uh, you. for all the things you've done. I just pray for some healing for, for my daughter, Abley, and just healing for our brokenness right now. Um, don't know how long we'll all be in this situation. <laughs> it seems like forever. Um, and that's the hard part is that there's just so many variables and unknowns that are going to come in the next month. Um, I do know that we have another video EEG going to be scheduled four weeks from now. Um, It'll be a longer one. And it's going to be for four hours this next time. And that's going to tell us what the next step is. Uh, it's going to tell us more because, again, I just have small windows of time that she can be on these medications the way that it is. And then we're going to know a lot more. So this, is a, this has been a hard two weeks. I'm not going to lie. It's been brutal. Uh, and this is going to be a hard four weeks. Uh, and I know that's going to be brutal. Uh, I'm just trying to sustain the best that we can. Uh, but, man... If I didn't have my church family, I didn't have friends, I didn't have Jesus, I'd, I'd, I'm a mess right now. And I don't even know what I would be. 
but I just, if I'm being really transparent, I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to do anything. Uh, I'm not good. Um, and I just, I don't even know. I don't even know. The only thing I do know is, man, go love your family. Yeah. Go hold your family tight. And all the crap that you get caught up in and think that you need to be doing and all the stuff that you're sidetracked about and distracted with, none of it matters. Like, I'll be honest with you, people message me and ask me, and I just don't even care what they're saying to me. Not if, Whether it's request or it's this or that, it's stuff that, that mattered to me greatly before that I put a lot of weight in and I really would jump on right away doesn't matter to me at all right now. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care because it's, it's not important. Yeah. Um, and so please, if anything, utilize us as an experience to say, let me learn from that. Um, I'm not in their situation. Therefore, let me, let me just hold on to those yeah. things that matter the most and prioritize my life the right way. Because guys, that's none of this other stuff that we waste time with matters. It really just doesn't. Um, so get out of that. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's all I got, yes. man. I'm, I'm empty. Love you guys. Love you Thank guys. You. Thank you.